Welcome to the How to Zoom presentation. I'm looking at the photography and videography and Victoria is going to be looking at putting those photographs and videos into a PowerPoint or that type of thing for use in your Zoom tutorial or presentation. First of all, of course, a disclaimer. I'm not a photographer, I'm a blacksmith, but I do take photographs. And this is what I do to get the photographs into the book or into an article. Typically, I like to work in black and white or grayscale um, as I produce my how-to steps for the articles or books. But I photograph in color because uh, color is a, a red, green, blue RGB file. And that, um, when you bring it into grayscale, converts to a grayscale format. If you just shoot in black and white, your camera may record RGB that just gets rid of all the color and that might give your printer a little indigestion. So I shoot in color and then I convert to black and white. So let's have a look at uh, what we're going to do here. Um, first of all, the camera and it's not about the camera. Of course, they do help. Um, I'm using a Nikon here. I have two cameras, uh, both very similar to each other, both Nikons. The lens is important to me in that it has a very uh, large aperture. And for me, that's a uh, 3.6 aperture. That allows more light to go into the frame so I can shoot at a faster speed, which means I get less camera shake. So that's important to me. I like a manual and an autofocus, and I use the autofocus more and more as my eyes gets worse and worse. Um, so I like both. The zoom, having the zoom come down to either a 16 or a 28 millimeter is useful for me. I go up to an 85. Uh, would I go more than that? Yeah, I'd like maybe up to 100, but not much more than that. At about an 85, I am good to go. And I shoot in a shutter speed priority. So I set my shutter speed to be no slower than a 60th of a second. Again, that gets rid of my uh, camera shake and um, that produces a much clearer photograph and photographs garbage in garbage out the better I can have my photograph going into my editing software the better it's going to be so let's have a look at some of the setups here um, with the right hand photograph you can see that that is my typical grayscale black and white photograph I have the anvil surface painted with that darker granite color of Rust-Oleum and my tools painted in that lighter stone gray color um, to give them a difference. As you look on the left hand side, you'll notice my, um, my background is this lime green. They call that a chroma key. Um, it could be blue or lime green, something that uh, one, it's a matte finish. It doesn't hold much in the way of shadow, which I like, or reflection. <clears throat> and when I convert it to grayscale, it becomes quite a nice neutral gray, somewhere between my granite and my stone gray. Here's my anvil. You can see I mask off the uh, dark side. And that's important to me because that is as if it were polished with use. So I like that nice straight line on the edge of the anvil around the bic, etc. Here's your chroma key background. Um, on the top left, of course, you can see a professional version. And mine is, uh, is not this. You'll see that professional is uh, $47.90, probably with free shipping. Um, that would not last in my world very long. I would end up tearing it up. Certainly it's good for portability. Uh, I would consider it for that as I'm sort of going down that road a little. But in terms of uh, long haul, I use plywood bottom and back and I paint it and you can see I've got my, it's a Glidden paint from Home Depot. This particular one is Barley Bamboo and it's a matte finish. And that's what I paint my um, background and base on. The anvil, you're going to have to move the anvil occasionally to get the shot that you require, whether it's, you know, you're looking down the offside edge or the near side edge or whatever, or whether you're working at the tip of the bic or the heel, because you want to work 
with that anvil piece, whatever section you're in, needs to be in the middle of the frame. So you move your anvil backwards and forwards. Uh, I would prefer the Dolly over the Lazy Susan, but the Lazy Susan has its place. Um, again, that's just a quick Home Depot run, but another expense. And here I am just showing the um, my setup. I've got my piece here, the piece that I'm forging or supposedly forging. This has been pickled in vinegar to get rid of the scale. And then it has been waxed while warm, not super hot, warm. I don't want it jet black. I just want it slightly darker than the original, just to get contrast. And you can see I've got my chroma key in the background and then I've got my anvil and my tool, two different colors um, up in the foreground. And of course, bottom right, you see what that looks like when I take that image into my software and I use Adobe Premiere uh, Elements, sorry, Adobe Photoshop Elements. I, I've got the suite of both of them, Adobe Photoshop, which is my photographs and Adobe Premiere for videoing. Uh, and you can buy those as a dual pack for about $150, I think. One of the key for me is to um, be able to take the photograph, move around without having to hold tools up in the air or balance things on my knee, et cetera. And so I use these impact grips. Uh, the impact grips, I have two sets of two. Um, <clears throat> one of the impact grips is going to act as my elbow, if you will. And the other one is going to act as my wrist so I can rotate, go up and down, etc., change the angle. In this particular case, I've got a automatic adjustment, not a manual adjustment, but an auto adjustment vice grip welded to a bit of bar that I've got contained within the vice grip. And that holds my tools, bits, pieces, whatever it is you need to hold that's ancillary to the piece and the hammer. The hammer I have on a similar setup. It's just um, basically I've drilled the handle uh, to accept the rod and it is uh, just um, adjusted accordingly. You'll notice that on the side of my um, backdrop here, I've got this basically a pegboard. Those are about two or three inches apart, those holes. And uh, I've got two layers of wood and they are about two or three inches apart. So I've got reasonable stability. Um, I move my arms around so that I can get the look that I want to with the two pieces, one holding the tongs or the piece, etc. The other one holding the hammer. And then when I orient the anvil, um, it makes the whole thing make sense as if you were looking from the best angle that you possibly can as you take this photograph. Lighting. Lighting is important. I started off with brood lamps and they certainly served a purpose, but they weren't really bright enough. And not being bright enough meant that um, I had to shoot my photograph at a slower speed, which meant I got more chance of camera shake and therefore I got worse photographs. So the better the lighting, and I'm looking for as broad and a diffuser, diffused lighting as possible. I don't want a spotlight. Spotlight gives me shadows. I have found these Husky lights uh, to be very effective. Firstly, they're nice and bright. Those two wings on the end, I can change the angles to accommodate my needs. And they are out of 5,000 degree Kelvins uh, color rated, which basically means they're like daylight. So the colors that I see in the photograph are true. If you go to more of a fluorescent or impact, uh, sorry, incandescent type thing, you are going to get different colors. So make sure that you test your lights before you commit. Uh, I like these. Um, I don't have these in my Photoshop. I have these in my forge for my videoing. Uh, for my photo booth, I actually have all singing, all dancing uh, photographic lights because at the time these were not available. Uh, if I was just starting fresh, I would certainly look at these because they'll do both in the forge and in the photo booth. I have four lights, um, one on each corner. The two at the back, adjacent to the background cloth or the chroma key, uh, are pretty much set. And they need to be set in such a way that they're not reflecting or shining into the camera lens. Um, so they're up and shining down. The two on the front are on tripods for me, so I can move them out of the way as I get in there 
and move the anvil in and out of position or off the piece completely if I'm trying to just show a photograph of the actual piece without the anvil. Uh, then I bring them in, adjust the height as need be, and then take the photograph. You can see on the left, I've got my brood lamp uh, with again LED, 5000 Kelvin, broad spectrum light. Um, and I put a diffuser screen in there. And the diffuser screen that I have is typically the ones you get from Home Depot. Um, they would go with uh, some strips of um, fluorescent lighting for use in your kitchen or something like that. And they are basically for diffusing. You would have them underneath your um, fluorescent light to spread the light out in your kitchen environment. I like the anvil to be low-ish, not super low that I'm on my knees, but I do like to get on top of the anvil or get above the anvil when I'm taking my photograph. So I also have a set of step ladders and the step ladders have a frame above the top step. Um, so I can lean against this and be secure as I'm reaching up to take those photographs from above the anvil. I don't want to fall off the ladder. Again, I use Adobe Photoshop Elements. I get the package, you can see I've underlined it there in red. I've got the Photoshop and the Premiere Elements uh, and I get them for 149. Actually, I get them less than that. Once you bought them once, and I bought them years ago, I think in 2011 maybe, um, then you can upgrade every few years for a fraction of that. I think I pay 89 maybe now for an upgrade. Um, and certainly the upgrades I think are worth it every few years. I don't do it every year because I don't think the upgrades are that valuable to me. So let's have a look at our um, Adobe Photoshop elements. This is typically the menu you see in your sidebar. And of these, I use a few. I use this zoom tool, that's handy for me. Then I'll use this level tool, so I can level the photograph directly. I can use the crop tool, so I can crop it to a specified size. Unfortunately for me, I can specify a size once, but I can't put it into a library. It does have some um, presets in there. They're generally not very useful to me. So if you want to um, crop to a certain size, say for a magazine or something like that, do all your other edits first and then set up your crop size and come in and crop each one um, as you go by. And then that way you can keep your preset in place. Next one is the clone tool. This gets rid of any gross errors or problems within the photograph. And this is a spot healing tool if I've got a bit of dust or something that I need to get rid of. So let's have a look at that and see where we go. So I'm going to bring a photograph into Photoshop Elements. So here we are in Elements. Um, the first thing I want to do is to make sure that my photograph is in focus. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on the zoom tool just up here. Let me just uh, get some annotations here. There we go. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click onto this, the zoom tool. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the screen. Bang, there we go. And I can have a look at this and say, yeah, that's a little out of focus. That's not bad. But all in all, I can live with that. So I'm going to stay with that. So now I'm just going to press the fit screen. There we go. Now what's jumping out at me at the moment is that this can looks like it's just about to fall off. And that's sort of one that's going to get most of your attention. So I think I want to straighten that one up a little bit, which may mean leaning that one back. So I'm going to come over here to this level. You can see in the, the bottom there. So I'm going to press the level. I'm going to make sure that it's all my layers and then I'm going to go with the original size and all I'm going to do is click along the bit that I want vertical. So I've clicked, I'm releasing the mouse now and you can see it just changed that. So this looks more vertical. This one is leaning back and I can live with that. So I like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to adjust it. So I'm going to go to image down to mode going to go across there and I'm going to go to grayscale. Okay, I like that. I wish the colors would pop a little more. So I am going to go to enhance, adjust lighting, 
and levels. And typically I don't do it this way. I use that command L function there, but we'll click on this levels now. I'm going to bring that into the frame a little. And you've got a few things going on. You can adjust the darkness and bring it back. I typically put it by the edge there. You can adjust the light and bring it back. Again, I put it by the edge of the photograph. And then you can adjust the middle grays. So I'm liking that. Still a little dark for me, but I'd like those color tones. So I'm going to get rid of the output. You can see that this makes it a little lighter without necessarily affecting the other um, qualities. So I've taken a little bit of the darkness away. If I wanted to take the light away, I could do that again, but I'm still keep, keeping the, um, the ratios of this um, input level the same. So I like what I've got there. So I'm going to click OK and get out of that. And then I'm going to come down here to the modify window and I'm going to click my crop tool. And in this case, I think Square is going to do it for me. Um, so I am going to, you can see I've got my drop down menu. I could uh, have no restriction, in which case I can just size it myself. <clears throat> but I would like them all to be the same size when I go into my um, magazine or whatever. So I'm going to go for a square. And I think I'm just going to go with this five by five. And I'm just going to click on this and move that up. And I'm looking for a little bit of headroom here. And I'm looking for a little bit of foot room there. So I like what I've got. Um, maybe we can try and move that up. No, I don't like that. I'm crowding the tool, move it down. I feel like I'm crowding the top. So I'm just going to move it up. I can live with that. And I'm going to click this arrow. And there's my photograph. Um, so let's have a look at the clone stamp. That's this one here. Uh, this brush you can see has got hard edges. I don't want to use that. I like my edges to be feathered. So I am just going to click on this and I'm going to use my default brushes and I'm just going to scribe down there. I like to see how that's uh, nice and blurred on the edge. So I like that. I'm not sure if 45 is going to be the right number for me, but I'd say it's somewhere between those two. So I'm going to click on the 45. And I can bring that up and that's the size of my 45. You can see that little circle. So I think I'm just going to go um, up a little bit. There we go. I like that. And so now what I'm going to do in for me, it's I have to press and I'm on a Mac, my option key. Can you see how that changes the look of my uh, cursor there to a, more of a target? So that's my sample area. So I want the sample area. I want to get rid of this line here. I don't care for that line in my photograph because it's right in the focal point. So I'm going to go as close to that as I can. No sense shooting up here because that's a completely different color. So I'm going to come down here as close as I can. I'm going to press my option key and I'm going to click the mouse. I can let go of the option key. I can move down and now I can just drag that across. You can see the cross is my sample and the ring is uh, where I'm working. So I like that. Now, if I go here to the bottom one, you can see my sample and my um, working piece are still in the same sort of ratio. So let's see if that's going to do it for me. It looks a little dark. So I'm going to pr press Command Z or undo. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to come a little low with my sample, press my option key, click that. And you can see that that's a little lighter for me. Okay, and if I really want to get good, I'm going to go here to my zoom. I'm going to fit screen. I'm just going to put my hand on the space bar for me so I can move that material up, the photograph up. And then I'm going to go back to my clone tool. Um, and I think I'm pretty good. I like what I've got there. Um, I might just shrink the brush a little bit. Yeah, and then come here with my option key, select my sample, and then just run down there. Now what I can do is I can also, you can see this finger on my uh, toolbar here. That's just going to mush things together. 
as if I was just making a mud pie with my fingers. And that is sometimes kind of useful just to break the edges a little bit. So I like what I've got there. And then if I have some, let's uh, put my hand on my space bar again so I can move the photograph. And I've got a couple of ugly little welts down here. And I could fix that with the clone tool, but a more appropriate tool would be this. Again, in the enhance, this is a spot healing tool. And I can come on here, just click that. And you can see how that goes away. Just, and if it were big enough, it would deal with some of this. And all it does, it takes a sampling from a roundabouts and puts it into the middle. Let's get rid of this one. Maybe a bit of that. And I think I am ready to save. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my uh, window here. I'm going to select negative and I'm just going to bring this down to a point where it fits in the screen. I'm having a look at that, see if there's anything I want to change right now. And I like that. So I am going to save that. I typically save it as a different file to the original. So I've got the original and the amended one. So I'm going to save this as whatever it is I'm going to save it as.